Good afternoon guys and welcome to the CAD webinar Introduction to iLogic hosted by myself Ian Cross, Technical Consultant here at CAD Group Australia. Now um, first of all I would just like to say a big thank you to everyone who's taken the time to come and view this webinar. It does mean a lot to us here at uh, CAD Group Australia that you have taken the time to come and view this webinar. So just a, a big thank you from all of us. Uh, like I said before, this is an introduction to iLogic through Autodesk's um, Inventor. So um, let's have a quick look at what will be covered today. Now, the agenda for today will be um, Inventor's part and Assembly iLogic. So I have a, a basic Inventor part file, which I'm going to modify using iLogic. So that will involve changing just some material properties. Um, but also updating some of Inventor's parameters. So I'll be changing the height, the width, the length of this part file. Now, once I've done it within the part environment, I'll then take that part into an assembly environment, and I will um, have other parts within the assembly reacting to uh, the change in this part. So once my iLogic part updates in size, uh, the um, corresponding parts will update as well. I've also I've linked this to uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So um, based on the parameters in an Excel spreadsheet, I'm also going to have some parts updating in the assembly. This is all going to be controlled using uh, an iLogic form. Now, an iLogic form is just a simpler way, more friendlier way of controlling your iLogic rules within the assembly environment. Now, once it's all done within the assembly environment, I'm then going to take that across to um, a drawing file where I'm just going to show a little bit of basic iLogic rules within the um, Inventor drawing environment. And I thought I'll just throw something in at the end, which is um, just something to show you that well, something else that um, iLogic can do. I have some data exported from an ERP system, which using iLogic, I'm going to import that into Inventor's iProperties, just to just show you something else that iLogic can do. Okay, so that is um, Inventor's the, sorry, the agenda covered. So let's jump over to Inventor. Now, here is my part um, that I have that's going to be updated using iLogic. Now, the first thing that I need to do is I need to create a driving parameter. Now, this is going to be the parameter which, when updated, will update my part. Okay, so let's just jump over to Inventor's parameters dialog box. Now, I have my parameter here, which is called tank volume. I just created it by adding a new numeric parameter, changing the unit type to liters, and putting in 500 there. So there is my parameter created. Okay. Now, so let's create our iLogic rule. Now, on my Manage tab, along here, I have my iLogic Add Rule button. So I'm going to add a new rule. So Let's call this rule tank size, because that's what's going to change the size of the tank. Now, this is my iLogic edit rule dialog box. It's breaking down uh, to three main sections. We have our browser section here, which shows the model parameters, user parameters, so that will show the tank volume that we've created. I have our browser tree full of all of our inventor features. This is where we write our iLogic rules. It's got some basic keywords and operators and some basic statements already here ready for us. And on the left hand side, we have some snippets. Now, these snippets are just some basic um, inventor codes that uh, Autodesk have provided for us. So, to start off with, I'm going to just insert a basic if then end statement. So, I'm going to say if. Just delete that out. If my tank volume, so I'm just going to right click on it and capture the current state. So I'm going to say if tank volume is equal to 500 liters, then I want something to happen. Okay, what do I want to happen? Well, I want some parameters to update because I want the size to change of this model. Now, if I go to my model parameters, it lists all of the model parameters I have within this part file. Now you can see some of these parameters I've actually I've actually renamed them to be things like tank height, tank width, and tank length. Now the reason for that is it makes it a whole lot easier for me to find the parameter that I need. Now if I just had D0, D1, D2, D3, and so on, 
uh, it would make my life a little bit harder, a bit more difficult to find the the, um, the parameter that I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these three parameters, the ones I want to change, and I'm going to say right click and capture the current state. So if the tank volume equals 500 litres, then I want this, these parameters to equal these values. Now I'm happy with those values for 500 litres, but what if I was to say I want the tank volume to be 600 litres? So I'm going to say else if tank volume equals 600 litres, then what do I want to happen? Well, I'm just going to select these, copy, and paste. Okay. Well, I want that one to be, let's say, 2200, and I want this one to be 2000. Okay. Now I can just copy and paste this whole thing again. Okay. And have it for 700 liters. So I'm saying, well, if it equals 500 litres, then I want this to happen. But if it equals 600 litres, then I want this to happen. And if it equals 700 litres, then I want this to happen. But I'm also going to change the tank width as well. Okay. So let's say, yeah, if it equals 500 litres, I want the parameters to equal these values. If it's 600 litres, I want them to equal these values and 700 these values. Okay, so let's have a little look at what happens here. So if I go to my parameters and I was to, let's just move this down here so we can see it a bit clearer. If I was to go and change this now to 600 and press enter, you should see the tank update in size, which it has. And again, if I change that to 700 liters and press enter, you see it update in size again. So my I logic rule is working perfectly. Now, what if these tanks, depending on the size, only comes in a certain material? Okay, so if it's 500 litres, it may only come in gold. If it's 600 litres, it may only come in steel. If it's 700 litres, it may only come in copper. This might be for pricing or just, you know, for, for, for any sort of cost reasons or just, you know, any different reasons that it could possibly be. So, Let's add another rule in to say, well, if it equals 500 litres, I want it to be made out of gold or copper or steel or whatever it may be. So let's go and add our new driving rule. Now, we're going to add a text value in this time, and we're going to call this material. Okay. And let's just add in a multi-value parameter, and let's say I want one of gold, one of copper, and one of mild steel. Now, you'll notice there that I've actually typed it in in the same way that it reads in Inventor's Eye properties. Now, that is key, because if Inventor can't read these values, it's not going to work correctly. Okay. So, I've done that. Now, let's write our new rule for this to update. So I'm going to go back to my Add Rule button. I'm going to create a new rule called Material. Okay, so just as before, I'm going to use that if then and end if statement. So I'm going to say if tank volume equals 500 liters, then I want something to happen. Well, what, what do I want to happen? Well, I want material to equal a certain value. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I want material to equal gold. Okay. If it doesn't equal 500 litres, if it equals oh, tank volume, excuse my spelling, if it equals 600 litres, then I want the material to equal mild steel. Okay, and finally, if the tank volume was to equal 700 litres, then I want material to equal copper. Okay. Now, with an if statement, you always must end with an end if. Okay. So what have I done there? I've said if the tank volume, the parameter tank volume equals 500 litres, then I want the, the parameter material to equal gold. 
If it equals 600 litres, I want it to be steel. If it's 700 litres, I want it to be made out of copper. Now that's great, but all I'm simply doing there is changing a parameter to say gold. I'm not actually physically changing the material to anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use one of these little iLogic snippets. Now within here we have an iProperties bit and we have one for material. So I'm just going to double click that and it brings this into here. So I'm going to say the I pro the material I properties is going to equal whatever value is in that parameter material. So it'll run through this rule and say, okay, if it equals 500 liters, I want it to equal gold. It'll run through the rest of the rule and then say, okay, the materials in the I properties equals gold because that's the value that's in material. Now, just to finish this off, all I'm going to do is add in a document update. That's just to make sure that everything is updated and correct. So underneath my document section, I have a document update. So I'm just going to double click that and I have a document update in there. Now, in the background here, we have our tank. At the minute, it's at 700 litres. Okay. So as soon as I click OK, it'll run this rule and it should change the material to copper. There we go. You can see the material has changed to copper. So if I just look in the eye properties here, you can see the material equals copper. Okay, so if I then go change this to be 600 litres, you should see the material change to steel. Yep, and you'll see display there steel. If I change it to 500 litres, press enter, you'll see that it changes back to gold and the material has changed to gold. If I go to the eye properties again, you'll see that in the physical tab, it is displaying as gold. Okay, now that's great. What I'm doing here is I'm saving your design engineer time. So he goes in, selects the value of tank that he wants, and it automatically gives him the correct material. So he's not going to accidentally place in the wrong material. But what if he accidentally places in the wrong size? Okay, let's say he gets a bit carried away and says, okay, well, I want an 800 litre tank or a 400 litre tank, something that doesn't exist or is too expensive. Okay, so we need a way of telling the design engineer that he can't have that tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little dialog box to say, I'm sorry, you can't have that tank that's not available. So let's create a new iLogic rule. Let's just call this, um, let's call this iLogic warning. Excuse me. iLogic warning. Okay. Now, what I'm going to say is if that tank volume is going to be greater than, sorry, greater than or equal to 701 litres, then I want something to happen. So what I'm saying is if the tank volume gets any value above 700 litres, so 701 and above, uh, I then want a message box to pop up. Okay. So in my little snippet section, I do have a message box function. And I'm going to show a message box. And within that message, I'm just simply going to say, you have chosen a size that is too big. Okay. And then I'm just going to have the title of that box as too big. Okay. But else if, what if the tank volume is less than or equal to something. So let's say 499 litres or below. So anything below 500 litres, then I want another message box to pop up. So I'm just going to copy, I copy and paste that in. And I'm going to say you have chosen a size that is too small. Okay. Okay. Now, the thing is, all I'm doing here is populating a dialog box that says, "Sorry, it's going to be too small." I then also, I also wanted to do something. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, after it gives me the message box, I'm actually going to set the tank volume to be 700 liters. So there can't be any mistakes. So if he types in 800 liters, it'll still set it at 700 liters. It's not going to give him the option to actually go ahead and create it. 
okay and the same for the 400 liters I'm gonna say okay well if, it, if he types in something less than 500 liters he's still gonna get a 500 liter tank and then again I always end with an end if because I started with an if okay actually let's just add something else into that dialog box let's say you've chosen a value that is too big and let's just say setting value at largest um, 700 liters okay and I say setting value at smallest 500 liters so it'll say sorry you've chosen a size that's too big I'm setting it at the largest possible value you can have okay so let's go ahead with let's say okay I want an 800 liter tank and I press enter I get a dialog box to say sorry it's too big you've chosen a size that is too big I'm setting the value at 700 liters so as soon as I click OK you should see that update to 700 liters and you can obviously the material has changed back to copper if I was to go lower than 400 lower than 500 sorry let's say four, 450 let's say You have chosen a size that is too small we're setting the value at the smallest 500 liters click ok and it gives me my 500 liter tank okay great so my iLogic rules are working perfectly so what again what I'm doing is I'm saving your design engineer time I'm I'm minimizing the amount of mistakes that your design engineer can make okay effectively getting your product to market faster so you can uh, you know Get the job done quicker so I've created my little um, part file here which I'm quite happy with so let's take this over to the assembly file so let's open up the assembly okay so what I have here is I have the tank sitting inside a frame okay so let's say for instance if this tank size was going to change so it goes from being a very large style size to a very small size you know I'm going to need to bring in these legs the leg sizes are going to need to change to accommodate the new diameter of the tank you know if the tank gets small enough you know I may I may need to remove some of these beams they're not going to be needed the ta the, the frame size is going to shrink so there's a, there's a bunch of things that need to happen now within my assembly I've already got these um, uh, I logic was already written just to save a little bit of time because we'd be here for a while if I had to write them out all out manually but I will go through and explain each one so let's let's have a look at my I logic rules so first of all I've got a tank size here so let's have a look at this rule so let's click on edit rule and let's have a look what's happening so just like I did in the part environment I've said if my tank volume equals 500 liters then I want something to happen okay so I'm saying okay update the tank length the tank width and the tank height just like I did in the part file but I'm also updating the frame width and the frame length now to get these values I did just like I did in the part I browsed to my tank I browsed to the model parameters and I grabbed my tank height and I grabbed my tank width and my tank length okay just like I did in the part file I just right clicked on it and captured that value and it brought it through okay so I'm changing the frame width and the frame length I'm also changing the height the radius and the angle of the foot okay now again just like I did in the part file I went to the foot assembly I grabbed the foot went to the model parameters and grabbed the foot height, the foot radius, and the foot angle, just like I did in the part file. Okay. Now the only difference I've got here is I've got this component is active section. Because what I'm saying here is if the tank volume gets down to 500 liters, I want to remove certain beams. Okay. So what I'll, I'll show you how I've done this. If I just remove this beam here, all I did was I browsed to my frame. found the frame that I wanted to remove right click and capture current state just like I did with the parameters and it brings through the component is active now if it equals true it means it will still be there 
and now I don't want it to be there so I'm gonna say false so it doesn't show the beam okay it'll it'll suppress the beam is what it's doing now I've done this for 500 liters for 600 liters for 700 liters you can still see that these beams are set to false I've then got down to 800 liters and you can see that these beams have become active so they're now true I've then went to 900 liters okay and you can still the same this the true again I have then like, like we did in the part file I've said if the tank volume is greater than 900 liters I then want a message box to show up to tell me that the value is entered is too big and we are setting the value at the maximum size of 900 liters and there's the parameters to set it at 900 liters I did the same for 500 liters so I've said if the tank volume is less than 500 liters I want you to give me a message box to say sorry you can't have that it's too small okay and there's my parameters for that okay and then I've just ended the document and done a document update okay now I'm also changing the number of flanges around here because the tank may have five flanges ten flanges six flanges one flange okay there's a number of different flanges now within my iLogic part okay the number of flanges is just simply a circular pattern okay so I've created one flange and I've circular patterned it okay now if I edit that feature you can see that the number is controlled by a parameter called number flange okay so all I've done within my assembly is I've created an assembly parameter called number of flanges okay I've created a bunch of these in here and what I've said is the tank parameter number of flange is going to be equal to whatever value I place in my assembly parameter so from within my assembly if I say I want the tank to have six flanges or three flanges it will update my part now that is as simple as you're going to get with iLogic just the tank number of flange equals number of flange and that is it okay but I've also I've got the tank flange size varying so de depending on what size tank it is I might want a different flange size now this is going to be controlled by an Excel spreadsheet now if I open up my Excel spreadsheet here it is here I've simply said okay if I choose the size DN10 I want that diameter of flange I want that many holes and I want that to be the size of the holes okay so what my inventor rule does okay it's pretty straightforward I will explain it to you I'm saying okay go and find a row in an Excel spreadsheet okay so I'm searching for the Excel spreadsheet called flange.xls find sheet one and find the row flange size okay it says then go find the row of the value I enter in my parameter flange size so if I enter DN 10 or 15 or 20 or so on it will go and find that particular row okay it'll then look along that row and go get the value for diameter holes and hole size okay it'll then take those values and populate my inventor parameters so the value that is in dire it'll go populate my value dire okay once these values have been populated it'll then go and populate those it'll take those values from say for instance dire and then propagate it down into the tank updating the flange size okay it's a it's a pretty straightforward code and then at the end I've just got an inventor document update just to make sure that everything is uh, running correctly okay and finally I've just changed the material okay now I've just said the inventor property materials of tank one equals material okay so whatever value I enter in my materials um, uh, properties there uh, parameter dialog box it will propagate down into my tank so I set it to be copper or gold or titanium or whatever it may be now you can see here that I, I haven't said um, if the tank equals 500 liters it's gold if it's 600 liters it's steel I'm, I'm giving the user full reign of the values that he wants okay 
Now, instead of doing this through the Inventor dialog box, I'm going to do this through the iLogic Forms. Okay. So if I go to my Forms button here, I'm just going to right click and add a new form. Okay. So here is my form, and here's a preview of what my form may look like. Now, what I need to do is, uh, first of all, I need to put in what's going to be on my form. Well, I want the parameters that need to be changed. So you just simply find the parameters section and drag and drop, and you'll see that the tank volume's there. I'm going to be able to change the flange size, the number of flanges, and also what material is there. They're, they're the only values I want to be able to change. Okay. Now, just to jazz this up a bit more, I might want a company logo in there. So let's just drag and drop a picture into there. And let's go and browse and pick a picture. So let's just pick a CAD Group logo and place in a CAD Group Australia logo in there. Okay. Now, the, the visual appearance of this dialog box can be changed. It can, there is... Um, if you select the form, you can change the visual style. There's a whole bunch of different visual styles here, um, different font styles, different positions for text. I'm, I'm just I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks at the moment. But I also I, what only happens is once I've changed these values here, I then need to run my rules. I need to kick them into action. Now, here are my rules. But I don't want four buttons. I don't want to have to run my tank size, run the number of flanges, then run the flange size, then run the material. I just want one button to run everything. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag my tank size rule in. So it gives me my button there to run my tank size rule. I'm just going to rename this here. And let's just say this is going to be called run iLogic rules. Okay. Now... I'm just going to, that, that's all I want done to my buttons for now. What I'll show you what I've done so that this tank size runs all rules. If I look at my tank size rule, okay, at the very, very end of my rule, I've got this little section here, okay, that at the end of the rule, once it's gone through and it's it's picked its tank height and width and length and it's set everything up, it then does an update and it then runs my other rules. So just using this run other section, I'm saying run another rule. So if I was just to put in, I would just double click this run rule. And then all I do is type in the name of the rule I want to run. Okay, now I haven't got any other rules to run, but I'm just going to say, okay, run the material rule, then run the flange size rule, and then run the number of flanges rule. So this way, I'm, I'm running one rule, and then by running that rule, it's running all the rules. So just one button does the job for me. Okay. So if I go to my form, bring up my form. So here it is. So let's say I want a 500 litre tank. I want it to have that size flange. I only want three flanges, and I want it to be made out of copper, let's say. Okay. I then just click run my iLogic rule. As you can see, it's got rid of those beams already. It's changed the material of the tank. It's changed the size of the flanges. It's changed the number of the flanges. And eventually, it's updated the size of my frame. Okay? So with just one click of a button, I've updated everything I need to update. Okay? So there's no going back, updating parameters, make sure that that constraint updates. You know, it's, it's just a seamless one button. Everything goes through and updates. Okay, so let's jump across to my um, assembly drawing here. So I have my assembly drawing. So I've got my my tank in here. I've got, I think it's an A3 sheet, I believe it is. Let's just have a quick look at this um, sheet. Yep, it's an A3 sheet with two views, size 1 to 30. Now, if that was to change to a size 900 litre tank, this frame would shoot off the end of the page. You know, this view would extend over here somewhere. The views would look awkward, out of position. I'd probably need an, an A2 sheet instead of an A3 sheet. You know, I might want an isometric view up here. You know, so let's go and change this to a 900 litre tank. So let's say 900 litres. 
let's update the flange size let's change it to let's say uh, carbon steel why not and let's run my iLogic rule so as you can see it's updated the tank material it's changed the flange size it's then it's gone ahead and updated my tank okay so that's done so let's jump back to my assembly drawing now you would think that there we go look at that it's updated my sheet size I should now be in an A2 sheet it's added in an extra view it's updated this from a size 1 to 30 to a size 135 it's changed the scale of this view great I, I don't need to go back and change my drawing view and edit my sheet every time I need to have a look at a different size tank or I need to produce a different size frame okay does it automatically for me so how's it done that so within this drawing I have a rule called sheet size again it's just a very basic rule so let's have a little look at this rule so what I'm saying is if the parameter of the tank assembly is 500 liters then I want the sheet size to be a3 I want view a to be a scale of 1 to 30 I want view 6 to be a scale of 1 to 50 I want view A to be a certain position, so coordinate 25-25. I want view 4 to be position 50-50. I want view 6 to be in a certain position. So I'm dictating where all my views go, and I'm even suppressing view 6, which is this ISO view. So you probably noticed when I did the scale of um, the 500 litre tank, there wasn't an ISO view there. That's because that view was suppressed. Now all of these codes here, I've just got from the drawing here. So I've got what sheet it is, what sheet height, what sheet size, um, you know, view height, view scale, view position. You know, you can you can change all of these from just just within here. Okay, view the corner. Okay, so I'm just setting the spacing to a certain corner. Okay, so I've set it to be whatever it equals six hundred liters, seven, eight, and nine hundred liters. Okay. So depending on which size tank I choose, my drawing view just automatically updates and there's no faffing around. Okay, again, saving your design engineer time, minimizing mistakes, and um, you know, saving you money, essentially. Okay, so that is um, my part file, my assembly file, and my drawing file. Now, finally, what I was going to show you was putting this, um, my ERP data, um, bringing it into my part file. So, let's go to my iLogic part, this little one here. Now, I have an Excel spreadsheet here, which is exported from an ERP system. So, I've got part numbers, I've got descriptions, I've got cost center, vendor, project numbers, ERP ID, stock number and a web link okay now I want to be able to get all this data into my inventor part file into this I properties okay now from within here all I need to do is write myself a simple rule so let's create a new rule okay let's add a new rule and let's call this ERP import okay so now instead of writing this out, I'm just going to copy and paste this in. Save me writing it all out, but I will again I will go through and explain it all for you. Okay. So here is my rule that I've created. So just like I did with the, the flange size, I've went to find an Excel spreadsheet, find the sheet number, and find the row called part number. Okay. So Sorry, there's a little bit above that. I've actually got a, an, an input box. So it's going to, when I run this rule, a little dialog box is going to pop up and ask me to input a part number. Okay, so I'm going to insert a part number. So based on that part number, it will go and find um, an Excel row. So if I enter, for instance, for this tank, the row is 1007. So if I enter the details 1007, it'll go find this row and it'll look at all of these details. Okay. It will go then go and find the row value for description, cost center, vendor, project number, ERP ID, stock number, and web link. Okay. It's going to take those values 
and populate my inventor parameters. Okay. Then from those inventor parameters, which I've just got down here, I'm then going to take them into my I properties values. Okay, so my part description. Okay, so it's gone and found the value for description. It's populated my PRT description. From there, I've taken that PRT description and I've put it into the I properties value project tab description value. Okay, I've done that for all of these, but I've also got a custom value here. Okay, now for my custom value, I'm just going to cancel that. Okay, what I need to do is just go in here and add. Oh, I've got my custom number in there already. So let's back to add in my rule. Uh, it was ERP import. So I copy that in. So I enter my part number. It goes through, uh, populates my inventor parameters, which then in turn populates my I properties value. I click OK, so let's run this. Actually, at the end, it's just going to give me a dialog box to say, yep, yeah, great, everything's worked successfully. Um, OK, so let's go. So it's saying, please enter your part number. So let's say CG1007. I click OK. It says, OK, all of your properties have been transferred to your inventor I properties. OK, so let's have a look what's happened. If I go to my inventor I properties, go to my project tab, I've now got my part number, my stock number, my tank number, my project number, my cost center, my vendor, my web link, and as we've seen before, the ERP ID is populated that 1783. Okay. I'll just show you that again on um, maybe another part. So let's have a look at let's say ooh, one of these feet so let's edit this foot here so first of all we need to create our custom i property so let's say this is going to be called erp id okay you can see that you know none of the stock numbers descriptions engineers all that none of that have been populated Let's create a new rule and call it ERP import. Okay. Let's just copy and paste that dialog box in again. That uh, sorry, that code. Um. Okay, I don't have a one for the foot mine, but let's just say it's going to have the values of the of the frame. So let's say CG one double O two. So I go CG one double O two. I click OK. It says that it's all done. If I now go to my inventor's eye properties. There you go, you can see that all of those have been populated in there. Okay, so that um, concludes my iLogic webinar. So if you guys have any further queries about what I've done here, um, or if you would like any of the code that I've used, um, I can, you know, it's free to a good home. Um, either contact myself at icross at cadgroup.com.au or contact Cad Group via our uh, web webpage. It's www.cadgroup.com.au. Okay, so again, um, a big thank you for everyone taking the time out to come and watch this webinar. Um, and I hope to speak to you guys soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.